So you ever go to buy something on Craigslist and it's not quite what you think? It looks good in the picture, but then something's not quite right? That's what we have with this one. <laughs> so it looks like it'd be awesome. Somebody just won't get off of it. She just loves it. <laughs> She has the same bug her dad has. So I go to test drive it with the guy. He's got a backyard like this, okay? I mean, it's steep. It's wet grass. I was like, well, I guess this will work. It's got the big tires on it. So I'm sitting shotgun, and all of a sudden, he stops in the middle of the hill. He lets off the accelerator, he puts on the brake, and that's all there is to it. And then he's like, watch this. He goes to push on the accelerator. And guess what, folks? Nothing. <laughs> so we start coasting back the hill. <laughs> it's like, I hope this has good brakes, huh? So we go sliding down the hill backwards. Boom. We hit into the little rock wall, and that's all she had. For the next hour, we listen to this thing going ee and not going. The white wire here was actually welded onto the end of the solenoid there and it was just always on so we're gonna get rid of that that's terrible nobody should have to listen to that right oh, oh. we take our multimeter and we set it to voltage 12 volts and this is battery positive so we touch on here and we get 38 volts no no bay just leave it there and then when we touch here we get 24 millivolts. You can see where it says millivolts there. So I'm going to get my foot up on the accelerator and I'm going to slowly depress it. And we still have. Holy crap, it went nuts there for a minute. It's never done that before. But we're still millivolts. We're getting volts now. Well, let it sit overnight. That's a little better. Anyway, it's supposed to smoothly go from you know millivolts or zero volts up into the higher voltage and it just won't do that it's better than it was last night it was hooked up for an hour see so getting hundreds of millivolts with it just sitting on the floor so it doesn't really mean anything immaterial so that's what a bad speed controller looks like should we pull it out and fix it okay you can take it out yeah go ahead Kid loves keys, cars, and everything. She'll take a key and she'll start turning it on the rivets and going all the screws with the key, trying to get the screws to turn. You like it, huh? Yes. You sure do. But basically, I'm going to tear into the speed control and see if I can find something burned. Um, We're going hunting for a burn mark, not for a witch to burn. Let's do this. Give me five. You ready? All right. You're cute. <laughs> <laughs> You know that, don't you? <laughs> sure are. Hey, when you turn in two? Oh. When are you gonna be two? Do you hey. know? You gonna be? You gonna do two? Hey, two. <laughs> two. Good girl. Oh. You're gonna be two in a month, huh? I'd like to add is that this cover's got four bolts. Oh. There's two in the top, two in the bottom. Hey. Two in the bottom really didn't want to come out, but we got them. And then you just uh, squeeze a little tab here. It's just got a real generic connector, and you can pull that up and out of the way. Oh. We're just going to take some things out of here. you got to be careful with these things because they're 38 volts, a 36-volt system. If you're not sure if you have a 48 or a 36-volt system, a lot of the components will give it away. Like this one is a 36 volts DC. 36 volt direct current and five coil. So these are 30 bucks. I was hoping it'd just be that, but these are 500 bucks. So you take a bolt out of the, any of the terminals. We'll just pick this one here, positive or negative, and pull it out. We're gonna zip tie these together. We're gonna, see this one says battery negative, battery positive, and then this says A1. So we've got yellow and red going to this side. We've got blue going to that side. So that's all pretty well documented. And then our resistor just bolts up to the sides of that. This is interesting because this has a drive control system. So I'm just going to leave this solenoid all hooked up because it's fine. It works. It's great. So we got the battery disconnected. We got the tools out of the way. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just pull the solenoid off and pull the cables off. Everything's disconnected so we're in good shape. And then that way I'll be able to get into there.
piece of cake. To get this off, best way to do it is just pull the bolts on each side. Once that's out of the way, you got one, two, and three bolts to get the speed control out. So this is my speed control. To get a new one from Easy Go is about $500. There's no quarter that I'm aware of. So this is basically a boat anchor. See a little hot spot right there. I say let's get into it. I look from this side and I'm just reading the, the witness marks. I think it's got to come off here. I might be able to get some access through this little panel. So I'll get into it and see what's there. When I was doing the cabin filter cut out on my truck, it was a lot better to just uh, cut it with the Dremel. So I think that's what we're going to do here. All right, here we go. All right. There we go. There's where stuff blew up. See? Right here and here. There may be some other stuff, but at least we found that we do have a bad speed controller. Can you see those? I think those are MOSFETs. I think those are switches. So. So. <laughs> are you mocking me? <laughs> you silly. I love your guts. You're funny. So on this side we got blown up MOSFETs. On this side we look okay. But yeah, those are definitely blown up. Looks like almost all of them on this side are toast. So on this side, this one's bad. This one's bad. This one looks bad. I don't know what happened with these. But this thing's generally burned up. If you're going to spend 500 bucks on something, it's nice to test it on the machine, but it's also nice to physically look at it and be like, oh, there it is. That's why everybody hates computers and fuel injection over carburetors, is you can't see it. You know, there's, you can't put your hands on it. You can't put your eyes on it. Now you can. Looking at this sideways, if I'm going to solder these, I have to get this top one off. The top one is these pins here but it's connected in a couple of ways. Um, one is just a real easy pinch connector. You just pinch that and pull, piece of cake. But you've got this pin here that's gonna require some soldering to get it off. And again, this thing is blown. It's useless as it is, so it can only get better from here. It's just a matter of time, if I wasted the time or if it was productive. There's also one little resistor here that looks like it got burned. I couldn't get these to unsolder. I use a solder sucker. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's like a little syringe thing that you just push the thing down and heat it up and you suck it up. I got all the solder off of those pins to get this apart. It just wouldn't come for anything. And the same goes for this little post here. So if I can't get into it, I can't fix it. If I can't fix it, then it's garbage. And it's broken anyway, so basically it's garbage, so I cut them. Um, I can try soldering them later if it's worth it, but in the meantime, we're getting in. So I paid tuition by tearing that old one down. Who knew those MOSFETs and transistors could be so stupid expensive? 50 bucks each. So I gave up and let the cart sit in the backyard for a few years before deciding to scrap it. Ha <laughs> ha! As if, you know me better than that. I found a better speed controller that's less money and got it coming for about 350 bucks. Pretty cool packaging. It's kind of a trapezoid of sorts. Look at that. Custom. The product as far as I... Ooh, it just keeps on going. <laughs> I said it's custom. This is a high performance controller. Properly rated wiring, solenoids, diodes, fuses must are very important. See Tech Note 10 and Document Depot on our website. AllTracksIncorporated.com for more information. Customers are responsible for products and applications using AllTracks controllers. Basically, don't go burning stuff up, right? So here's our fuse, or shunt, or whatever it's called. You can see a little thing in there. Mexico's proud of it. it looks kind of, it looks like a cookie or something. Like I want to bite it. I want to eat it. This thing's like a labyrinth. Da na 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 I think this thing's a brick. This weighs about as much as a jug of milk or something. I think it's about eight pounds, give or take. All right, warning. 
Pay detailed attention to polarity. Always fuse battery pack. See owner's manual for details. And then they go out and give you a few so that you'll actually do it. Good for them. That's cool. Uh, what else we got? We got paperwork. Don't forget to do your paperwork. The paperwork, all it says is, this is who we are with our contact details. Here's your contact details, and this is what we sent you. And uh, that's about all. No destructions. For destructions, you gotta go to the website. So EV drives, Carl Peel. Carl Peel? I don't know, but I like the guy. He saved me about 200 bucks, and I got a lot better product than if I were to go with the factory thing again. So I'm, I don't know who he is, but I like the guy. The other thing I like is that you can actually take this apart and service it. You could get into this thing if you wanted to and replace a diode or replace a transistor if you want. It's got a bunch of uh, anti-corrosive grease and stuff already ready to rock. It's fun to say already ready. It's redundant, isn't it? Okay, so this came with it. TCX mini manual, programmable, all this stuff about it. Uh, here's your wiring diagram so that you know what everything is. There's a lot of things that you can do by jumping certain wires to get more performance out of them. I don't know what all that is, but I've seen a lot of things on eBay and it's just a little wire jumper. So, good to know. Here's some instructions in color glossy photos. I am liking this company more and more. So you got to bolt this to one of the batteries and then this goes in. Awesome. Well, let's get to it. We know this is good because we tested that. We felt that clicking. There's a little wire arc to the side of it that was probably making it funny, but I think we're good. Ooh. Okay, so how do you program the thing? That's what I want to know. They say you hook it up to your laptop and you can program it. What? I know what these are all for. I can see that there's an opening here. I see that there's, it looks like license plate bracket holes, like they click those in there so you screw something to it. That something is your solenoid, this guy right here. This is the culprit. So that's what you screw onto there. So if there's a plug to plug into it with your computer, is there another plug somewhere in the thing or is it just in here? I don't know. Honestly, after waiting for this all weekend and really wanting to get this thing going, I just want to throw it in and you can't. Why? The holes don't line up. The bracket that goes over across the top for the solenoid doesn't match. The bolts on the outside, see here's the old bolts for the original controller. They go here, here, and here, those three bolts. And then there's this bracket that goes over the top for the solenoid and it goes in here and here. So I just bolted it down with these side ones. That's two bolts instead of three, but I find that it's quite firm. It's quite, uh, it's sturdy. I'm gonna run with it. That's what I'm telling you. So when I stick the drill bit down in there, I feel like I'm sticking my finger in a light socket, I find that it about pulls out like a <laughs> license plate light thing. But I find that the drill bit will go in clear to here. When I compare that with my uh, license plate bolts, it's plenty long enough clearance. You know, I got all the clearance in the world clearance. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, send that one home. Go home. Just get that started. You can see that one side of my solenoid is open. Let's coast that right over the hole, put it in place. Get the other one started. This is working out really, really slick. I mean, I happen to have license plate bolts on hand. If you didn't know that you need them, now you do. Boy, it's hard holding the camera. You get the idea. Also with these, there's a F1 and F2. F1 is the white wire and F2 is the black, exactly the same as the other controller. So to get the plug on, you really have to pull hard on mine to get it to get all the slack out and get up on there. It seems like this is all a lot higher. Another evidence of that, or to support that, is that the one that's the A1, on this side it's uh, M negative or motor negative, it's really hard because it won't reach unless it's smashing over the top of all these wires. I'm not okay with that, so I'm going to have to cut all these uh, zip ties and redo this. No big deal, it's not the end of the world, uh, but that definitely needs to happen. wondering how I'm going to get this cover back on because it's way higher than I think the old one was. So it's been a couple minutes. 
Um, I got rid of the fuse here because it stuck out too far. There's just no way on God's green that that was going to fit over with this uh, narrow profile cover. And you need the cover. Look at all the dirt in this thing. So, as necessary as it is, we're going to make it work. And in order to make it work, we put the fuse on the negative terminal on the other end of the battery cable rather than the battery negative on the controller. And as far as the bottom, all of my wires are caught up on this and they're not getting around it real well. So this is a bigger case that makes it easier to work with. It's more rebuildable than the other case. The other case was just packed full of electronics. There was no more room for anything else. That's why I'm so nervous about putting a bolt through here unless I put some kind of a test material through first. So I can't get the wires through this because they stick up too high at the base of that. So the next step is to take this over the workbench and cut that up about double what it is. It's still not tight, but it's a lot closer than it was. And I think we're just gonna have to live with it. There's a lot of drainage available in that bigger hole that I've made. I probably have double and then some. So when I pulled this off, I noticed that this wire was over the top here. And that was stacking everything back, so that was a problem. You wanna run these as far around the backside as you can, but you gotta bear in mind that there's a little resistor plate thing at the bottom. So, best thing you can do is just run it down each side of here and here, and then this one can actually sneak around behind after it gets around that. So we've got everything tucked in there, and it actually fits on great. The cover actually covers everything. There's not a lot of extra room. A lot of uh, the space has migrated from being in a really tight box to a bigger box and then everything else had to fill this box. But it's all contained and we're in good shape. Before when you click it like that, it just start going going all the time no matter what you did. So I've got it in neutral. Put the key in. Well, it's not whining and screaming. We'll put it in forward. Break off. <laughs> Put it in reverse. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Never had a golf cart before. I'm pretty excited about this. This should be a good time. Get the door up. The key's on. Just gotta remember which is reverse and which is the other. <laughs> that should be fun. I think I'm going to tighten the brakes before I do anything else with it though. There it goes. It's fixed.